sequence on the internet that's gary he's binary gary on the internet and we also have allison who's allison plus on the internet and this is the last show of the decade uh as allison pointed out earlier uh i was just thinking last show of the year last show of the season but no it's it's a bit more historic than that Uh, it's an historic day i like to ramp up ramp up the drama for each recording (laughs) <laughs> no pressure uh, but this is how we're going to close out the teens and and suitably <laughs> uh historic is that it's day after impeachment day um, yeah i'm not really feeling very yay about it but well, uh, i mean i'm not feeling like boo about it but like uh, well it sucks we had to get to this point agreed on the same I just, token so i didn't think it would happen well, it's not going to happen. I mean, it, this is happening, but it's not going to happen. I, my frustration is that recent polls show more support for uh, impeaching and removing Trump from office, like a full 50% uh, of the United States population support it. Uh, and yet the Republican side of, of the government still insists that he didn't even do anything wrong uh and that this isn't what the people want despite the fact that there's more support now for impeachment than there was for nixon when he was being impeached so you have uh two republican senators in your state right i have three no two two senators three representatives and one yeah. democrat representative. but you're both your senators are republican well. pair, right? oh hell yeah yeah of course i do yeah so uh Seems like a good time to start writing some letters. That's old school. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Baby steps, though, right? Like. No, 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 I mean, Romney. Romney might actually be halfway. Oh, mittens! I forgot about mittens. That's yeah. right. He's yours. <laughs> yeah, Romney, He's right. He might. He might be on the. He, yeah. He might actually vote uh, for impeachment. Um, maybe. Because on alternate Tuesdays, he's got half a testicle. He's got a spine. Alternate <laughs> borrows someone's. Yeah, yeah, only on alternate Tuesdays. Every other day of the week, then, uh, then he doesn't have any. Yeah, so depending on the day, he might break rank. And... Yeah. But, like, it's days like this when I, when I, like, regretfully wish for John McCain. God, I was just thinking the same thing. I was thinking you know that what, last night. He's a maverick. Yeah. <laughs> And I hated McCain so much, so much. But now that he's gone, I'm like, yeah, I wish we had John McCain. Wouldn't be so bad. The thing about the thing about McCain is that, um, or was, uh, that yes, he was absolutely Republican. However, I think that he was like willing to discuss alternate sides. He wasn't like lockstep, you know. Certainly not that lockstep happen. with Trump. Yeah, that's I mean, if you get, you get to pick yeah. a president to be lockstep with, like, this is the guy, this is your guy, like, seriously, this this guy, <laughs> not pointing to Gary there. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to follow me into the White House, somebody's going to need to bring a GPS. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, twenty twenty. <laughs> I did have a twenty sixteen headshot for a while that said, "I can legally be elected president because I meet all requirements." No. Oh. So that still holds true. I can still legally be elected president in the United States of America. What are all the requirements? I mean, I'm sure I hold them too, but... I mean, I think you'd be born in the U.S. You'd be like 35 years old or something or older. I don't know what the number is. Mm-hmm. It was the age threshold that I finally crossed, crossed, I crossed in 2016, you see? <laughs> you have to also speak with a transatlantic accent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? I feel like president is the last job I would ever want to hold. Oh, would not would it not be terrible? 
just politician in general. There's like a lot of shaking hands, kissing babies. Like it's all the things I don't like. And every day someone comes in with some kind of brief for shit you need to know yeah. and shit you need to respond to. And you need a way like, how do I respond? How do I deal with this to keep everyone, man, F it's a lot that. of juggling. It's a lot of juggling that I wouldn't be able to do as like a representative or a senator or anything like that. I mean, to be honest, that's I probably uh, why he Trump is so bad at it. Yeah, because he doesn't actually want to do any of those things. He never <laughs> did. Um, I would love to see a representative run on the platform of like, I'm only serving one term. I don't think that will happen like, though. Why it's viewed as a failure for some reason at this point. It didn't used to be. It totally but like, is. I don't know at what president it shifted that it was no longer that like if you stop at one term, people are like, oh, you must not really want this. <laughs> well, I wasn't even thinking about president. I was just thinking about like, you know. Oh. I don't know, like some minor regular. our our you know our city mayor, councilor or something. Yeah, city our city mayor is 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 not running for re-election. Um, it was actually a big deal when she said that she, um, when she that she was not going to be running for re-election. It was for like family, like reasons, she said. But she was, I mean, she's the first um, LGBT uh, mayor in Salt Lake City, um, and only running one, only doing one, serving one term. Mm -hmm. So uh, now that I've brought everyone down. <laughs> now that we've got that out of our system. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's out of my system, but. No, it never is. Take, a, take a breath for now. It's a dark loneliness in the, in the pit of your stomach. <laughs> Canada's looking pretty good. I mean, I was going to say it's feeling pretty good, but it's freezing here right now. I'll, I'll take it. I left I mean, the house I, up mittens yesterday, and it was a poor decision. <laughs> what? What? Uh, how? How freezing is it? Is it like just freezing, or is it below freezing? Um, it's like zero degrees Fahrenheit right now. That's the same. Oh, oh so God. exactly freezing. Yeah. Oh wait, that's, no, Fahrenheit. Wait. Yeah. That's below freezing. No, zero zero Celsius is freezing. No, zero Point Fahrenheit. Oh, zero Fahrenheit. That is cold. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I struggle with anything when it gets below about like, I don't know. It was 48 this morning when I took the dog out and I'm not equipped to deal with that. Like, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to handle that. So I, I put on my pants and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be cold out. I need something on my feet. So I put on sandals because it's cold. And then I'm, you know, I usually go out uh, with no shoes and no shirt and whatever shorts I can grab to take the dog out. But I'm like, it's cold. So I grabbed a hoodie that has a metal zipper and zip that up. Took the dog outside and out there, like, you know, like I don't know what to do in this weather. It's a, it's forty eight. It's not that cold, but if it gets colder, like what the? Because like know? if it I'm gets a loser, cold enough, it's the kind of cold. It's the kind of cold where like you can feel your nose hairs freezing. Like it's just not healthy. Like people shouldn't be outside. <laughs> I mean, I've been in some cold weather like that. I don't. That's well, here we go. Let's harken has... back to the first episode. The first episode was about barefoot running. Do you recall this, Chris? Uh huh. I, at some point in my life, uh, it was a very long episode too, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. I wasn't there for it, so yeah. there was no, sure. no wrangling involved. <laughs> well, yeah, we I mean, only two people didn't, didn't trigger the 10-minute the warning in the automatic kickout. Yes. Um, we were beta testing the idea anyway. Yeah. So um, I was, at some point in my life, I was a runner. I guess I would be if something were chasing me now. And I was training for a marathon and I was in um, Janesville, Wisconsin, and then it snowed and I had to get in like a five mile run as part of my training. So I took my running shorts and my shirt and my socks and shoes. I'm like, well, I'll warm up pretty quickly. And I did. And I went out in the snow and I ran like, gosh, this is really hard to run in. It's really effing cold. And I ran two laps around the hotel before I figured there is no way I'm going to warm up from this. And I came inside like Keith Chatter. I was an idiot. I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know how to run in cold unless something was chasing me. I saw someone running outside yesterday and I was just, I mean, like I was impressed on one hand, but then on the other, I don't know. It's hard because it's like, if you're a serious runner, you can't just take the day off because then you're taking the whole winter off essentially. Um, right. But, there are running pants. Yeah. Oh, this guy was at least decked out. He had like the full situation. He had like, yeah. even like a running, like, like what are they called? Balaclava things. And 
I, don't know. I mean, like it's colder here than it normally is. It's definitely a cold snap of something, but. I was gonna well, say, this part of I guess does Toronto have like an underground uh, city or shopping mall type thing? Uh, <laughs> So that people we have so to get people, over there for so that people don't have uh, to be more downtown. Because if you work in that hub, then you don't have to see the outside, depending on where you live. Because then you can take the subway, you go down. There's like a food court. There's everything down there, and then you can take the subway to go home and wherever you live. So you might only have to be outside for like five minutes. Wow. During your whole day. <laughs> yeah, that that is a country that understands winter. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, They're like, no, no, don't don't go outside for food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only not only are we going to prepare against like cold weather, we're going to build an entire city under the city because we understand that no one's gonna want to be above ground. Yeah. It's also good There's for the zombie that, apocalypse. Yeah. I was gonna say it doubles as a fallout shelter. Yeah. But, but here's the problem. We have the ability to do that. So someone was like, you know, I could build a city that could keep people safe from anything. I'm going to choose it to build it somewhere where it's really effing cold to keep people alive when it's too cold to live. Like, why couldn't that have been used to, like, I'm going to build it inside a rocket so we can put people, like, outside of the world. Like, that seems like a better use of that skill set. Like, so, under It just seems uninspired, is all I'm saying. So a thin <laughs> sheet of metal is better protection against uh, danger in in the outside world, yeah. I guess I would say, even though it doesn't really uh, qualify when you're in space. Uh, a thin sheet of metal is a better protection than a layer of like sediment and like ground and concrete. I'm saying they put in the, like they put the thought process in, like it's not the material, it's the thought process on how to build this entire city underground, right? Don't don't build it underground. I think we have enough underground and above ground. We get plenty of stuff, but but like you could have built this anywhere inside of a spaceship. Seems like a more useful spot. Is all I'm saying. But you're basically I'm like judging. I mean, like your your general take on things is you're over Earth, and we need to just <laughs> move to space. <laughs> I'm not over Earth. I think there are fantastic things on Earth. I mean, we were talking to the kids about the Grand Canyon the other day, and I was thinking about the first time I saw the Grand Canyon. And it just takes your breath away. I mean, you can't adequately explain it or understand it looking at pictures. Like, you need to experience that in person. It's amazing. Um, there are parts of the earth that are awesome. The human part kind of sucks, but it kind of goes with the territory, right? I, that being said, I still feel like humanity needs a backup plan. Like, we need raid. We need raid for humanity. Future version. Yeah, appropriate. Yep. You're very on brand today and every day. I, I didn't mean to be. I, I'm just, it's getting to that part of the season where there's like a little bit less work to do. And uh, it, I don't know. I've, I'm able to think broadly about things that I can never do anyway. Like <laughs> I haven't been to the, stuff. I haven't been to the Grand Canyon as an adult and I think I'd enjoy it a lot more. Cause when I was a kid, I got really anxious about like going too close to the edge and like, sure. I'm I don't always feel like really anxious about going too close to the edge. Always have been. Yeah. I feel like I, I really, I remember it like really deterring my enjoyment level of the, I remember the gift shop being great because they had all sorts of like fancy geodes and things like that, but um, I'd like to go back and like be a bit more calm, potentially. <laughs> like well, nervous, but like not. respectfully nervous. <laughs> I definitely remember, I, it was probably it was before I had kids, so Ron and I were there with my parents, mm. maybe 15 years ago. And I remember, like, oh, you know, it's a, it was a long drive in. We went to the North Rim, is what it's called? Yeah. And, um, and, like, getting out, and it, like, slowly, like, dawned on you how big it is as you walk from the parking lot, and, like, the trees kind of clear, and you're looking down and out. And, like, I remember, like, the conversations, like, we were laughing and carrying on, like, how they stopped, and that it was just, like, it's, it's big. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's just so much to take in. It's so much to take in. But I mean, that's, that's an extreme example, you know? I mean, goodness. I mean, that's I, the kind of shirt they need to sell in the gift shop, though. Just a t-shirt that just says, it's big, Grand Canyon Park. <laughs> I'm all about, like, weird swag. If I was in charge dang, of I'm taking a walk. Jobs, I'm taking a walk in the woods today. That settles it. I'm I'll put on real shoes. <laughs> 
I'm Sex. not taking a walk in the woods today. Yeah, no, that's not happening here either. I might I've, go outside because I have to pick up a prescription, but even then I'm like not happy about it. <laughs> are we, are we, uh, I just, I'm curious, some operational stuff. Are we, uh, are we going down the road of topic today or, or no? I have a topic. I was gonna um, ask. Sweet, let's do it. Okay. My topic is Freytag's Pyramid. Freytag's Pyramid. Aha! <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> no, I was, I was going to let you take it. You were so you started yes. off. You're so strong. I know you both were chiming in at the same time. So maybe rock paper. Don't you talk over you, Chris. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's, it's all yours. <laughs> um, Freytag's pyramid is. Um, wait, wait, wait. Spell it. F R E T O G. Uh, F R E Y T A G. Freytag's. Freytag. Pyramid. All right. All right, got it. Go, Gary, do it. Uh, it is, uh, well, it, it's less German than I thought it was, but it's still pretty German, I think, in origin. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's pretty German, yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking EI, but I think it would be Fry, right? Fry talk? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on my pronunciation, so feel free to riff on other potential. potential. Sure, sure. Fry tag. <laughs> Uh, is a uh, yeah is definitely a German um, brand of appliance. They call the Freytag <laughs> and, repair person. And then the pyramid. Uh, a pyramid uh, of appliances. Sure, why not? Sheet it's metal. like when you it's like when you order a trio of something at a restaurant. And you're like, oh, the trio of creme brulee, and it has like a bunch of different flavors. <laughs> so uh, Freytag's uh, pyramid. <laughs> is um, you know how we have this device that we use uh, to illustrate like uh, things that are important that we need to do, uh, but we don't want a lot of it. And then it goes progressively to like less important or like lar but things that we have lots of sort of thing. Um, so like the food pyramid, like at the bottom of the pyramid, yeah. it's like mostly fruits and vegetables. At the very top, it's like, I don't know, sugars like you need them but Beer. you don't need them have yeah sure um like you know that sort of thing so freytag's pyramid is is sort of is that device it's the device of ordering things uh in a way that illustrates sort of most important to least important or uh i almost went down the same like thought process because i thought oh pyramid like what pyramids do i love i can think of food pyramid and then of course i can think of like the pyramids in egypt I can't think of any other pyramids. What other pyramids are there? Uh, there's there's the, Aztec I mean, pyramids. Sure, thank you. I Well, physically there constructed pyramids. That's probably a better example. Physical pyramids physically or constructed. the food pyramid. What other pyramids are there besides the physical ones and the food pyramid? Uh, hypothetical pyramids that you learn about in geometry. What? I mean, learning about pyramids as a shape, as a construct, as a as as yeah. a thing to study, like how they are made, is like as a geometrical object. It's a type of pyramid. Gary's not having it. <laughs> what other pyramids? Um, are there? Um, there are. I mean, there's obviously Freytag's pyramid. I mean, obviously. I mean, surely. Cool. You can't, can't forget Freytag. Can't Lest she forget. <laughs> so I have a question, and maybe this is something that we need to figure out later, and maybe it's something that a listener could submit an answer for. But my question is, uh, so, so the Egyptian pyramids have four sides on the bottom. And yeah. a triangle has three sides, obviously, because the triangle is a pyramid by definition, and an object that has four sides at the bottom, or is it like anything that kind of pointies like a pointy thing <laughs> like, like if, if, if there was if there was a pyramid that had three sides on the bottom would that still be a pyramid and is that actually more pyramid than like egyptian pyramids that have four sides on the bottom yeah i see your question so like and, do tetrahedrons count as pyramids? Right. Yeah. I mean, can you go farther? Can you get a pyramid that has like six sides on the bottom? That I mean, is that still a pyramid? Is it is the pyramid this, the, the the pointiness? Or is the yeah. pyramid the triangliness? 
<laughs> right. If a, uh, well, Woo. the quantity of sides, right? Like at a certain point, if it's X, when you reach an infinite amount, it becomes a cone, correct? Correct, right. So is a cone a subset of pyramid, I think would be another way to ask the question. Yeah, but that's, that's the wrong way to ask the question because it does not include the word pyramidiness. <laughs> And it also know. does not include the word triangliness. <laughs> Your question is invalid because you did not make up words. <laughs> oh, if I have a dollar every time I heard that. There's no pyramid in them. <laughs> Fry tag, free tag. I, I, I want to jump down my um, understanding of German from high school, but I had to repeat German in high school twice. So... This is not a good thing for me to rely on. To That's understand. good. That's a great thing to rely on. I'm learning Greek. I think I, that tells yeah. me nothing. I think tag means play. Sure. So, like, uh, like when we, well, like when when we're kids and we're playing tag. Oh no! It means day. Shit! What does it mean? <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't want to correct. I'm pretty sure it means day. <laughs> Like, and when you, when you say hello, you're saying guten tag, and you're saying good play. Good play. Good play. Yeah, well, all right. <laughs> so maybe take German that third time. No, no, no. It was, it, believe me, it was plenty. Uh, <laughs> despite what just happened here, I don't, it's not, it's not my thing. Like, not how me. do I know that? But I don't, like, I couldn't name the days of the week in German or anything like that. So, other than Freitag. Yeah. 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 It, it's uh. Yeah. So I'm. I we're going to we're going to Greece uh, for the retreat this year next year, um. And yeah. so I'm like, hey, Greece is a thing in Duolingo. So I flipped over to Duolingo. I had added another new language. So now I've got Italian, Portuguese, Esperanto, French, which I started a couple months ago, and now uh, Greek. And Greek is the first one that has required me to use a, a new keyboard and I have oh. no idea how anything works. I kind of can recognize the letters and understand like how to say the letters. Mm -hmm. Like there's a whole, like you had to do this whole thing where like you had to do the alphabet first. Um, like you had this whole lesson. You couldn't do any of the other lessons oh, before you did the alphabet. Um, um, I don't remember. Pi, five. Omega, something like that. Make Mumbled over him. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a frat boy. I had to learn the Greek alphabet. I don't think you're <laughs> pronouncing any of them correctly. I oh, no. Know. That seems likely. <laughs> so, wait, are you. Are you, you I also can't say day in Greek. <laughs> I cannot either. I can so say, wait, I can say word. Lingo? What? Yeah. Okay. I can say word. Or no, letter. I can say letter. <laughs> Grama. Yeah. That's what, what I've learned so far. In Greece? uh end of april uh -huh. it, it's i i remember this because the last day of the retreat is um aaron and i's anniversary it's may 1st and so the plan is that she's going to fly to me and we will meet on on at the end of the retreat and then we will spend a week uh in greece nice. together That's the next is there a, is there an app for that like duo transit so she can learn you know how to walk well now you can learn to fly Based no. on your existing knowledge base? No. Veto, hard, hard pass. Yeah. I was learning all about, about I mean, transportation in Greece, though. I was, I was doing my research there. I guess um, like taxis separate. are the way to go, maybe buses. Oh. Um, the Freytag. All right, so we have determined that we don't means, know the context of pyramid. Which means woman play. Hmm. Um, woman play pyramid. Woman play pyramid. It like, is a. I, wait, that's it, the other type of. That's the other type of pyramid. Is the game show. Game show pyramid. Yeah, I was going to say it oh, is shit. a. Yeah. It is a type of of uh, competitive sports pyramid. Mm. That's a pyramid too. Like yeah, um, like a people pyramid. Like a, 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 a tournament. It's all sometimes referred oh. to as a pyramid. Because you know, you all is so the final game. Yeah. Yeah. So the, let's talk about between the game show pyramid and the tournament pyramid. The tournament pyramid is working on the bottom up where you are like eliminating teams to get to the one. The game show pyramid you're trying to build down. So there's two different approaches to pyramids. Where do you start? On the base pyramid of the scheme. Or the top pyramid scheme. Oh. It's a pyramid. 
one person and on that's the a top. top down yeah, yeah. top down yeah. yeah incidentally can i talk to you all about i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> The can I invite you to my Tupperware party? <laughs> Your multi-level yes. marketing uh, campaign. Um, so to that end, a uh, Freytag, Freytag pyramid is a booyah, booyah. pyramid of um, maybe... I don't know. I got nothing here. I, I mean, it's, it's a metaphor. It's, it's, it's a visual way to explain something, uh, but who the hell knows what. But that's literally what I said. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been a little, little bit off since the conversation about how little German I know. I've, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on my heels today. You're shaking. <laughs> yeah. I was no, not expecting to confront my German own inadequacies too. so rawly today. Yeah. Duolingo has German what? too. I, uh, you, you probably know there. more than you think. You probably know more than you think. If you started doing Duolingo, you'd be like, oh, I remember this. Have you tried other language I, apps or just Duolingo? I've just done Duolingo. I'm not, I'm not entirely sold on like the way it structures lessons. Yeah. Um, there's definitely an emphasis on like trying to make things practical. Yeah. Um, which which is good but then you don't learn like the rules like french like there's a lot of rules and you learn none of them and it's yeah. really really hard especially when you're trying to like um conjugate like things like well how do, how do i know that they are like what the difference between they are and he is or mm -hmm. she is you know if i don't understand the rules like i the only reason why i know that there are rules is because i took like a semester of Spanish and uh, three years of Italian. And those are kind of similar because they're Latin languages. So I can kind of like, oh yeah, well this is kind of sort of like this. So I can kind of assume that like, um, but, and also in French, like you just don't pronounce half of the words or half the, half the letters. Like you just drop everything. Um, Gary's either frozen or staring very quietly uh, at, <laughs> at his computer. Oh. Um, <laughs> I vote frozen. <laughs> Probably frozen. Um, yeah, so, so like, it's, it's really, French in particular is really difficult because, um, uh, like, when you conjugate, it seems to me, when they pronounce it, that it doesn't sound any different than when you don't conjugate it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just, like, how do I know what the difference is? It's like a weird hidden meeting. Yeah. And like, unlike for, so for instance, like I, I took Spanish a bunch. And then when I started trying to learn French, it's like, I can bluff my way through. Yeah. Spanish a lot yeah. It's just like, I can pronounce things and just make my way through it. But in French, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't bluff this as well. <laughs> Yeah, Erin was saying that that's the one thing that she doesn't like about French because she's been she's been trying to learn French um, and trying to learn it with Lila because Lila was interested. And then I started, and then she was just taking it by herself because the kids got bored with Duolingo and didn't want to learn another language because it's hard. Um, so she's like, "Well, I should like somebody should be doing it with me." So I was like, "Okay, I'll do it with you." Um, French seems like a good thing to learn, um, especially if you might be moving to Canada. Uh, so so I started doing it, and like she's like her complaint is that um, yeah, it's too easy to 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 fake your way through it um, and like not really learn anything because like you're just guessing correctly without yeah. without understanding the rules so that's that's the one that's one of the things i i, I don't like about duolingo um yeah did i miss what fry talks pyramid is while i was gone no you didn't we were just talking about languages and we can i was totally about, about to be like we're yeah frozen. we're done Everybody knows what it is but you. <laughs> Good luck. So I think I think that now that Gary's back and we have the 10 minute warning, we should probably uh, figure out what Freytag's Pyramid actually is. Yeah. So Freytag's Pyramid doo, 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 is, oh no, I lost my little summary. No. <laughs> um, it's where did it go? No, what happened to all my tabs? <laughs> I had like 10 tabs open on it. Now I have like perhaps the shittiest two tabs on them. 
Ugh. Okay, well, it's it's a way of de um, describing a dramatic structure in like a play or a film, and it breaks down um, like introduction, rise, climax, the return or fall, and the oh. end. So it's a way of describing the narrative or a dramatic arc. Named for Gustav Freytag. <laughs> yeah, because Gustav's pyramid doesn't quite roll off the tongue, does it? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see that as a pyramid. I would see that as an arc. Take it up with Gustav, Chris. I will. I will. <laughs> but that makes did sense. Did he, did Gustav self-title this, or did someone else say, oh, you're using Freytag's pyramid? He, no, he, he, he was a writer and he introduced the idea and I think then people ran with it. Because hmm. it was in contrast to another way of doing a narrative arc that Aristotle described. Hmm. Oh, interesting. But I don't think Aristotle's, I think it was just like Aristotle's narrative theory. I don't think his had a cool name. Like <laughs> Aristotle's bubble or something. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Aristotle really kind of rambled so that makes sense <laughs> so it'd be funny if like it was like aristotle's like uh i don't know um what's the like the aristotle's the, non-linear oratory style aristotle's waiting pool or you know, like you know something that hadn't even been invented yet be super <laughs> rad water fountain lazy river that's what i was thinking aristotle's lazy river was the aristotle's what i was looking lazy for. River. <laughs> the narrative. And it would have been much better had i said that when i was thinking it as opposed to now 30 seconds later uh we have some allison questions freaking words hard yeah yeah it should be so much easier without the words yeah well uh, to that end i'm going to skip to the to the second from the bottom uh okay. because you're complaining about words how do you say california backwards come on gary there's an obvious answer here you need to you're the one that's going to give the obvious answer California backwards. There you go. That's the I, one. But I was. <laughs> I would expect nothing do less. You, do you do you find yourselves reading things backwards just for the entertainment value of it? Uh, only Ukiah. <laughs> Ukiah is haiku backwards, uh -huh. or haiku is Ukiah backwards. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I like to read like business things backwards when I'm out for a long drive to keep the mind busy. We even created like a whole set of rules, like, cause there's sometimes the letters that aren't pronounceable the way they're arranged. Pronounceable. pronounceable, yeah. <laughs> Look, this word, we're well, setting aside words for a minute, right? Let's just follow me down this logical path, please. <laughs> we're like, even created like a mental set of rules that when you, uh, ca you uh, uh, bump into these letters that are not pronounceable, there's substitutions that you made mentally for them. I think we're just. Reducing. I should write this up. That's you should. I, there should definitely be a a GitHub gist that describes the rules for uh, for reading things backwards. Yeah. Reading much like backwards. much like the the GitHub gist on the parb scale. Yes. Yes. I will. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I I California backwards. I I don't know. <laughs> California backwards is is. I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't honestly, an like, I don't have an answer to that. Question. I think, I think, I, I, I think it. the answer when I saw when I saw this come in like a month or so ago, my first thought about uh, how you say California backwards is in the water. Because if you go backwards from California, you're just gonna be in the it's, water. You're gonna be in the ocean. Using my default rules, it would be Ian Rothlack. So, okay. <laughs> but I had to see it. I couldn't do it in my head. I I got like four letters in, and I'm like. Ah, yes, yeah. words. <laughs> words. How dare they? <laughs> uh, Ian Rothelak. Would you rather grow yeah. five feet taller uh -huh. or shrink by five feet? I would rather shrink by five feet than grow five feet taller. Really? Yeah. So you I, would I feel rather like be like of... one, like half a foot tall. But what you don't know about Gary is he's really seven five. <laughs> he's not. I've met him in real life. He's not. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's right. I'd be about a half foot tall. Yeah. Yeah. Six, maybe seven inches if I'm really leaning into it. <laughs> um, if you're doing the, if you're doing the the Donald Trump posture. If uh, 
Doing yeah, if, if you're asking for my driver's license, it's definitely seven inches. But if you're at the doctor's office, it's six, right? And that's the, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, invert the uh, weight, though. I weigh much less than my driver's license. Um, yeah, I do think so. Because, it, like, it would be easy to use things as a smaller person than it would be, like, if I'm five foot taller, this bed is useless to me. Like, there is not a standing desk that would work for me. I think like traveling would suck if you were five feet taller. So practically, if I had to go one or the other, I think being smaller would be better. Um, also kind of plays to that. I like to be a spy and I feel like maybe I could sneak into places. <laughs> it's like Thumbelina style of like, no problem. Yeah. Uh, my knee jerk was five feet taller because of the inconvenience of being half a foot tall. Uh, yeah. 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 Like if you're if you're half a foot tall, then you you can't you you have to get rides. You have to take the bus or, uh, like no, climb, in, climb into an Uber. True. Climb into an no. Uber. No, you buy a real nice um, drone. <laughs> <laughs> Fly, please. Fly everywhere. Ha! Traffic jam. <laughs> I like the idea of being five feet taller to like navigate crowds. You'd would, have a really good, you, no matter where you are, you'd be, you'd have an awesome view at concerts and sporting yeah. events. But think about if things didn't change in proportion, like you're five feet taller, but like it's all like torso. So your arms are like sort of useless because they're not long enough. But if everything went in proportion, you could go grocery shopping and like lean over to the next <laughs> aisle to get the thing you needed, you know? You'd like walk down three aisles and be done grocery shopping. You'd be popping things from all over the place. That's true. How I guess awesome I would... would that be? I, I don't know. I don't think I go down more than three aisles anyway because I tend to do like a lot of tiny shopping so uh maybe it wouldn't help me much I like to think that if it was I was five feet taller people would be like hiring me like a weird circus act so I'd be very well off and I could afford things like a private jet where I could stretch out as much as I want and like mm. you've given us more thought than I have <laughs> she I came up with the question I, I have a lot of time to think about my question <laughs> <laughs> This is just not like a uh, flash in the pan question. I've been pondering this. No, this is, uh, yeah, and we'll see. I, I I assume that if you're if you're if you are five feet taller, then you are not yeah. the only human being that is five feet taller. There are other human beings that are equally or uh, at you know in the same range of of that that size, and so there would be accommodations oh, made geez. for people. In this size. universe, though, in this universe where people can be five feet taller and five feet shorter. The whole forbidden love story gets really weird. Ooh. That's just a ten foot I, difference. I don't even I don't even want to to uh, yeah. No. Explore that. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get there's, it. there's some dark places there. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> I was thinking more like holding hands and walking in public like you're you know? <laughs> like the like more like that. more like sticking you in my pocket. Yeah. Right. You'd just be like riding on someone's shoulder. Yeah, yeah. That sounds awesome. And then the people who didn't change height would just be like the normies. The normies. Oh. This sounds like, a, like, this a... sounds like a novel series. I was thinking this sounds like a, a Dr. Seuss like take on the Sneetches. <laughs> Except that you can't add or remove the star because it's kind of hard to be five feet taller and not appear five feet taller. No sneaking. Hmm. Yeah, and the stars are large. <laughs> can you can you imagine like what the what would happen in like the clothing industry? Like you're yeah, five feet taller, so you're buying clothes that make you appear shorter, and you're six inches tall, so you're trying to buy clothing to make you appear taller. But really, how much can that possibly help? You're still only you know six or seven inches tall. So, thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.